Peter Jonah, Isiak Rahman, Adebayo George, Judah Agbosi, Balumi Phillips, and Farouk Yusuf were abducted from the Lagos State Model College in May. Well, 53 days on now, and the six boys are yet to regain their freedom. When will they be reunited with their parents? Mm -hmm. Well, with us in the studio is a social commentator, Mary Ikoku. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. 53 days on, and the boys are not yet back. Is it still defensible? 53 days hmm. is a long day, long nights coming for a whole lot of parents, mothers, fathers whose mm. children have been taken. Mm. Um, is this defensible? It would be a very tough defense to put up for anybody. Um, we know where the children are. They've been kidnapped and this isn't the first time this has happened in this particular school. Yeah. Um, one would have wished that when it happened the first time, measures would have been taken, not just um, paying ransom and getting the children and the vice principal back, but pursuing and uh, seeing government commitment to ensure that a repeat of that doesn't happen. Uh, it's really sad that we would be talking about this issue it, it really not quite is. long after the first um, I think it was October 2016 that the last yeah. Yeah. kidnap mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. in that same mm -hmm. school mm -hmm. so it's um, I don't know I think a lot more can be done I don't think it's really defensible I wonder what you think um, can or should be done Ambody himself the governor of Lagos State has expressed frustration, saying he actually feels inadequate mm. that those boys are still in, in the kidnappers' den. Do you think the parents are complicating issues? Because they've paid 31 million naira so far, according to reports, mm. and yet the boys are not back. Is that what the problem is? is it, would it be more advisable for them to actually keep off and allow the police uh, do their job? I won't say the parents are complicating issues. Okay. Um, you know, if you if you birth a life, it's almost there's emotional absolutely connection going on there, and that that maternal thing, and the parents won't find it easy to stay easy. Mm -hmm. It will almost be impossible to stay mm -hmm. easy, particularly when they are not. I'm not sure how updated these parents are as the government is progressing in their search. Is um, that where government is getting it? Uh, I think it's, uh, if there's a communication gap, it may be almost difficult to get the parents to stay calm. Mm -hmm. But if you're carrying them on every step of the way, mm -hmm. uh, especially things that you feel that will assuage whatever pain they are going through, and uh, things, information that they need to have to assure them that l the lives of their children are still very much intact. I, I learned that they're no longer able to speak to the children mm -hmm. as they were allowed to before. I mean, there was some form of communication between yes. these parents mm -hmm. and the kidnappers, but that is no longer happening. If I can talk to my child mm -hmm. and I know that child is in danger, how still really, how calm can any parent be? But it's that, almost impossible. Okay, mm -hmm. but then, uh, do you think there is any word that either the police or the state government uh, could tell uh, the parents that will switch them and make them lay low and relax? Because, uh, like you said, there is this attachment already as a parent to your ward once you, a you have them. So, the kidnappers so far have already shown that uh, they uh, either way could want to get the amount they settled for initially that uh, they wanted because they got like said, 10 million naira, mm -hmm. a severed communication, and later on we, we just heard that they got about 21 million naira, and now they are demanding 1.5 million naira according to reports <laughs> for, for transport. transportation. <laughs> wow. So f now, do they even have human face, really? And can they depend on their promise? Because two weeks ago they promised to release the boys, and up yes, until now still. the boys are not back. Mm. Well, I think they are still gambling. Um, I wouldn't know why these things are going on this way, but I won't put the blame on the parents. I would think the government needs to do more. Even when you, uh, even saying the governor feels he's, they've, you know, exhausted up inadequate. all options That's or the word he feels inadequate. Mm. That even saddens me the more because he's my leader. Any governor would have to keep upbeat in 
instances like this because we want to see hope. We want a, somebody who inspires. So let him just continue to be upbeat. He should not feel inadequate. It's mm -hmm. okay to feel it privately, but we don't want to know. Mm -hmm. But the important thing is that if he feels inadequate, the parents are going to collapse. Serve as a pillar mm -hmm. to the parents. So it, it, the strength that the parents could take on from the, the leadership will also go a very long way mm -hmm. by the hope, the kind of words that the, the leadership gives mm -hmm. That will, you know, kind of assuage, um, ameliorate the pain the a little pain, bit. Yeah. You know. Now, if, I mean, you, you, you are an advocate. You've been working with women and children. children. Now, with uh, 53 days gone by, and these children are still uh, with total uh, strangers, can you paint a picture for us what you think the situation would be, uh, you know, for those children? For those children? Yes. <sighs> If I look back, even as a child when I was in secondary school, I want to take myself back mm -hmm. that number of years. We had something called man love. And when this man love shows up, it's like rapists, right? Mm -hmm. When they show up at night in the girls' hostel, the kind of trauma, the, the, the racing, the, the whole place is in turmoil. Mm. Now, if anybody is taken at that point, we didn't experience that kind of sort of thing. But if anybody is taken at that point, I can just visualize the, the confusion even right there on, on, in, in the school premises, mm -hmm. in the dormitory. How much more in the camp of, of your abductors? You know, these children are helpless. Yeah. These children are powerless, more or less. How, I mean, look at anyone who can get into a school through a hole and empower, we'll be able to abduct children from the, a whole lot of the population of schools and all the academias and all of that. It tells you that they are more powerful than these children. So the children will be going through horrific, emotional, troubling period at this time. So I really, the, the trauma they are going through mm. is unthinkable. Mm. From your parents' home, to school, from shelter to shelter, from warm to warm, mm -hmm. now to a terrain that you have never experienced in your life. It hurts. Mm. It's painful. It's scary. Because even as a mother, I'm scared of sending my children to school. And for 53 you don't days, know, they are enjoying and that Because house if safe, I be. know that for 53 days, I can't see my child. What hope am I hoping on? Mm -hmm. So it takes every one of us to keep talking, to keep giving out words that will heal more than the ones that will mm -hmm. say. It's not even a time to blame government. Mm -hmm. All of us, mm -hmm. the people, the government, the leadership, everybody really do have a role to play here. Because when you speak bad about the government, you are down further deepening, you know, making the parents of these children to, to be more scared. And then... And lack confidence. Um, and lack confidence mm. in this government. We all know how much the Lagos State government have put in in terms of security. They've made a lot of investment. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we should not take that for granted. Mm -hmm. right. But how workable are these things they've put in place? It's another question. To get the yeah. boys back. So do you think so far, are you impressed with the level of advocacy to get these boys uh, back safely and, and to their parents uh, in Lagos especially and of course across Nigeria? Uh, are you happy with the way uh, people are talking about it or not? I'm happy with the way people are talking about it, but I'm not very, very sure that the advocacy is strong enough. Mm. Um, we all know about the Chibok girls issue yeah. and how Dr. Ezekwesli and co. rallied round and got people, everyone talking. Mm -hmm. Personally, I'm a mother of boys. I sit in my home, wake up every morning, and I get my boys, we pray for those boys. Mm. I have no doubt that so many other parents are doing the same. Do you need right. a moment? We, don't, we, yes, we, we, we understand. We, we, just it unimaginable is. that the boys are going yeah. through what they are going through. Yeah, it, 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 I can it's do so this sad. in my quiet, in my home. Mm. I believe that many people are doing the same. But we need to do more. We need to really kind of strategically come out and hold government 
accountable. Is it a when case, I say strategic, is it a case of mm, chibok fatigue? About, is that what's going on right now? Are we tired? chibok fatigue? Yes. I'm not is sure it's about. Thing? I'm not sure it's about chibok fatigue. I want to think it's also about how certain political colorations also made the chibok fighters look really bad. A lot of a lot of our people said all sorts of things about those people that mm. do you think these people would really have the, the the spirit to come up and start another fight another struggle so how we treat our fighters the right activists mm. is very important mm. because if you if you make them look bad the first time they are fighting a, a very serious cause like that where life is involved and hey the child belongs to the state Absolutely. So it is the responsibility of the state mm. to get back those children. But then the responsibility of the society as well. Yeah, the state and the society, I mean, you can't take mm. them uh, uh, separate. Uh, separate. But these are individuals who stepped out from their comfort zone mm -hmm. to fight, to clamor for the release, to be, to, for these girls to be brought back. We can do the same thing for these boys. People are talking, people, there are a series of advocacies going on, but they are not cohesive. They are not that, um, they're not people coming together to fight a common cause. Mm. Is that everybody's doing one thing at, at their own end. I think if people come together, they will have more, one voice, a stronger one. voice mm. and louder voice. Mm. And I think we would achieve much more if we do that. How can we achieve much more? Um, like I asked one of our guests last week, if society really has failed, uh, these boys and every young Nigerian that is found in this kind of uh, situation. Mm -hmm. what, what exactly do you think is responsible for this vulnerability of the young? Young people, whether it's in the northeast, in the south-south, southwest, southeast, all across the country, is at the, you know, at the receiving end of the worst of society. Are we compromising the future? I mean, these are the young people we say are the, the ones who will take over, you know, the in, leaders of the in future. future. What happens then? What do you think is the future of Nigeria if the younger ones are in such a situation? What kind of Nigeria are we building? We already know the kind of Nigeria we're building. Um, when, you, we're, when we don't create jobs, so connect educated people to jobs. It's pretty much simple. Mm. Take care of, address the losers. Now the losers in this instance are people who have not been able to find their feet, have not been able to find any food, but that's not an excuse to crime, right? Yeah. But find a way. We were in this Lagos at some point when I could sleep with my door open. Absolutely. It wasn't long yeah. ago. Mm -hmm. So let's all tell ourselves the truth. It wasn't a long time ago. And many, many of the times I could not, you know, get on the road on the island, Lagos Island, and stop my car and pick a young boy on the street to say, please, show me the way. No, I, can, I, I could do that not quite long ago. Mm. And when you engage those people, they said, ah, I don't know what the governor is doing, but somehow we just have to sit up. What that tells you is that something is definitely going on in the state. Mm. Jobs are being created. People are getting more engaged. Because when, the idol, when no, our youths are idle, what do you expect? Mm. Mm -hmm. Really. So it is very important that if we want a future, the youth, a brighter future for our youths, our young people, we need to begin now to ensure that those who should be in school should be in school. And when they're in school, they should not be taken away. Mm -hmm. And that those who have graduated should have jobs. And if they don't have jobs, those who have entrepreneurship uh, skills. skills should be able to, we should be able to provide an enabling environment for their businesses to thrive. And I believe that the schools also need to have um, good securities in place. Mm. It's, we know that a lot of parents, I'm a parent in Lagos State, and I pay, my, my husband and I, we pay a lot of money mm -hmm. to send our school, children to school. Bulk of this money, is, they should pay serious As attention. As a parent, are you engaging the school, for example, the school where your kids are? Yes. Are you engaging them in such a way as to ensure, to insist that they should provide basic things like CCTV to ensure that, you know, when anything negative happens, hopefully it doesn't, mm -hmm. that you can actually quickly mm -hmm. apprehend those responsible for it. Mm -hmm. Isn't that where the PTA, the Parent Teachers Association, uh, comes in? Well, Rather my, than actually leave it to government alone. No, my, the last PTA meeting we had, mm. I actually raised the, 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 the issue that we would 
call for a uh, CCTV and access control, not just CCTV, mm -hmm. access control in and out of the schools and um, communication even between the school, the parents and whoever carer is picking up children from mm -hmm. school. But the issue of CCTV is not just for the, even the abductors. So some children, even in the school, are being abused. The CCTV are there to capture all of those. Mm. Children's stuff are stolen. That was even the bane where we called for CCTV mm. in, the, the, in the, PT, the last PTA meeting we had. But beyond that, paying serious attention to security by the school. You see, it has to be an intention of the school. Yeah. It's not something we pay. We should pay lip service to. Get setting up schools, especially the private schools, is not a money-making venture per se. It's a service, and you must be willing to provide those services. Mm -hmm. And one of the key things is that you must ensure that your school, the place of learning for these children, are highly All secured. Right. Okay, let me quickly ask because of time. Uh, do you think it, it will be uh, highly, of course, in place if uh, uh, children now, not just in Lagos, but across the country, uh, are taught how to uh, defend themselves, mm -hmm. uh, learn yes. some defensive uh, uh, mechanisms, and of course, uh, bring it to mind now, the boys that were released by the kidnappers before taking the six boys away, mm -hmm. that they, when they asked them the, the jobs of their parents and they told them they were artisans. So let the children know that okay in case this happens this is what you do when you see a stranger and then yeah. learn how to defend yourself would that help in a way at least it should help in a way because we, uh, even you see even our society we have a way of calling everybody uncle and auntie <laughs> so i let t train my children to, to to call people by their names mm. so if i have a steward he's et etta his name is mr etta so you don't call him uncle because He's, He's not, not your, your uncle. uncle. So if you call him uncle and Mr. Etai is kidnapping my child tomorrow, even on the way, this driver who drives me is, has taken my child. On the way, the police stops them. You're even making the job difficult for the policeman mm. because the police ask the child, even if the police have, has any feeling suspicion. that, suspicion that this child on. may be in danger and says, who is this? The child will say, Uncle Etta. Mm. The police isn't going to think that your uncle is going to be abducting you, is he? So some of the ways our lifestyle and our culture, the way we attitude to some of these things need to change. And we need to educate children on um, some security measures, how they yeah. can self-defense, how they mm. can defend themselves, mm -hmm. how they can run off if they have to at the point they need to. And even the, the language, if we teach our children our languages, I can tell you that those children, if they are Yoruba, if they are Igbos, if they are kidnappers, their abductors may not speak the uh, language. English. They yeah. may not speak English. They may be speaking their native language. Absolutely. So if their parents also teach them their, their local dialect, they will be able to understand every move of those mm. people. Mary Do you understand? Coco. There's so many ways we can... Uh, we can't thank you enough. Mm -hmm. It's been such an interesting discussion an this morning. Too. Yes, indeed. Uh, we tried here not to uh, tear up. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Uh, we do hope that... Uh, this case will be found as soon as possible.